Today, we're going to talk about the fusion of innovation, one of the technological determinism theories that is used in the scholarship of communication. So this particular theory was developed by Everett Rogers in the 1960s. Everett Rogers is a distinguished professor emeritus in the Department of Communication and Journalism at the University of New Mexico. The theory has two main ideas. First is that the theory explains how an innovation or idea or product or even practice is diffused over the time through a specific population or social system. Second, the way in which innovations are communicated to different parts of society and the subjective opinions associated with the innovation as important factors on how quickly that innovation spreads. Let's understand the term diffusion, which is a social process that occurs among people in response to learning about some new um, development or innovation. For example, the vaccines used to inoculate us against the COVID-19 virus is an example of an innovation that quickly spread. In its classical formulation, diffusion involves an innovation that is communicated through certain channels over time among the members of a social system. The typical dependent variable in diffusion research is time of adoption, though when complex organizations are the adopters, subsequent implementation is more meaningful measure of change. The theory further tells us the stages by which a person adopts an innovation and whereby diffusion is accomplished include awareness of the need of, for an innovation, the decision to adopt or reject the innovation, the initial use of the innovation to test it, and its continued use. The best example here is the cell phone. Ask yourself, how fast did you acquire a cell phone once it was made uh, commercially available? What made you aware of uh, the mobile phone and its usage? Did you uh, see it in an advertisement? Did you see it um, being used by your friends? Um, how was it introduced to you? Uh, or perhaps you're in the generation that was born with it. So it was never introduced. It just came naturally because you see everybody using it. So basically, the theory tells us there are five factors that influence adoption of an innovation. First is awareness. How aware are you of a new product or a new uh, style of doing things or a new development? Compatibility, basically compatibility to your own situation. Complexity, how easy is it for you to understand the innovation or how easy for it uh, for you to use it? For example, if there's a new application, when Viber was first introduced, did you find it easy or difficult? So this um, does affect the way people adapt to a new innovation. Triability. Also, um, if there's a chance, especially if the innovation is still too expensive, is there options to just try it out or really committing oneself to its use? And finally, observability. Um, how we observe others using it, how uh, we observe its functionality uh, in, in our situation and in society. Rogers tells us that there are several levels before an innovation actually becomes something um, mainstream. And he presents us this chart where adoption of the new idea, behavior, or product does not happen simultaneously in a social system. Rather, it is a process whereby some people are more apt to adopt the innovation than others. So we can ask ourselves, are you among the innovators, the 2.5%? So he gives a, a basic, uh, in his study, he sees that there is a, a certain level of the population that can be grouped into um, when 
um, they adopt something new. So the innovators are those who immediately adopt a new innovation. So that he labeled them as 2.5% of society. So these are the ones who, when, let's say, the Fitbit first came out, were the first ones to purchase it and to try it out. Then there were the early adopters. You know? So the early adopters is the group that they've seen the innovators use it. They like the way the initial use has shown, and therefore, they go for it. You know? they, they also purchase their own product or try out a new style of doing things. So these are the early adopters. Now, not all technologies actually make it to the mainstream. And here, this is why he had placed a chasm um, between early adopters and early majority. Early majority are those who are um, already sort of mainstream or they facilitate the mainstreaming of a certain innovation. So if they see that it's something that's accessible, that's easy to use, uh, that makes life uh, more, that e it eases uh, or facilitates our lives, then it is adopted by the majority. Um, but first, it has to cross the chasm. And there are many factors that prevent a product or a new idea from crossing the chasm. Some of the factors can actually be in the production itself. So for example, um, the Betamax. Now, the Betamax came earlier than the VHS. If you are in that generation that still use this particular innovation or um, not, then you can look it up. So these were the first ways of sharing or watching videos outside cable TV and the movie houses. Now, why was the Betamax short-lived? Because the VHS had Hollywood support. Now, the VHS, which is an American production, had Hollywood support. While the Betamax, which was a Japanese production, did not have that kind of support. And therefore, they took the back seat. The same can be said of the BlackBerry. The BlackBerry mobile phone was at one point very popular among the early majority. In fact, it managed to cross the chasm, but did not quite make it to the late majority or those who adopted the mobile phone much later on. So. Um, Basically, the late majority are those, if we were looking at the mobile phone as the product in question, then we'd say the late majority adopted when um, Android had already produced their own OS or the iPhone had its own OS, um, leaving BlackBerry by itself and not being able to move forward. So, so basically, we see the innovators, the first set, early adopters, the second set, uh, the early majority, those who make an innovation mainstream, the late majority. So basically, they just, they're just look and see until it becomes so popular that they will feel left out if they don't have that particular, uh, if they don't use that particular innovation. And so they adopt it themselves. And the laggards, the laggards may be the set that when it's completely normal, popular, and everybody has it, that's the only time they acquire it, or they don't even acquire it. They just observe people using it. They know what it's for, but they still refuse to adopt to it fully. So I leave you with this thought. Can you think of technologies that failed to cross the chasm? And there are many. <music>